Hi guys, Breko here. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and watching my channel. Today I'm going to show you the uh, prenatal modification, uh, my version for Ashtanga Yoga practitioners. So for those who have not tried Ashtanga Yoga or not tried yoga before, I do not recommend starting Ashtanga Yoga when you get pregnant because it's a vigorous practice usually and starting something new. Uh, the joints opening uh, in a way that never experienced during a pregnancy is not recommended because you have relaxant and all the hormones that are uh, loosening up your joints more than usual so you have a higher risk of injury. So for those who only had a practice uh, before and who has some experience in Ashtanga Yoga but you want to keep going with your own practice during the pregnancy um, this class is for you. Okay. Now one book I'd like to recommend is this Yoga Sadhana. My uh, dear friend Dottie uh, gifted me this with this book and, and it's very helpful. It has a lot of different experience about the mothers and Ashtanga community and kind of show the modifications and what's recommended and what's not. Okay. So according to the book during the first trimester, it is not recommended to practice um, because of the higher risk of miscarriage and your body is going through changes. So it's definitely personal choice but if you choose to practice, take a very gentle approach, no jumping back or too much of a restriction and core work. Be very gentle um, around your belly and definitely even more listen to your body, body and be mindful. Okay. And during a second trimester, which I am in currently, I am a 20 week pregnant and five month. So it's a good time to be in a trimester because you don't have that much of a symptoms anymore for a lot of people and you can practice and you can kind of work out again. But you still want to take it very easy. You want to avoid twists, closed twists, um, lots of a, too much of a shock. So jump back. Oh, like uh, I do jump back still with really cautious lots of cautious but um, in the book it's recommended not to jump uh, it's not recommended to jump back so you can just step back uh, also some of the inversion uh, only if you're comfortable with headstand already you take that but if not this is not the time for you to take extra challenge um, you can also modify a lot of things so I will show you the um, some of my my version of um, modification that I've been taking and also some of the modifications are I taken from this book okay so if you have any questions let me know come to my blog uh, page Reiko Yo Reiko's yoga room um, and then also the tumblr page and message me there um, and then you can also buy this book and ask other Ashtanga mamas that whatever they've done and it's just really depends on people what they've done but um, it's really personal choice and it's really about you listening to your body listening to your baby listening to your belly uh, being more mindful than ever be, than even usual practice yeah. stand on the top of your mat Bring your hands to your heart. Let's start with your Surya Namaskar A. A come in, inhale your hands up, look up. Do I exhale your hands down? Go ahead and bend your knees if you need to. Trini, inhale your head forward. Chaturanga, exhale to your Chaturanga. Go ahead and step your feet back. Now Chaturanga, if you feel okay to come into your regular Chaturanga, do that. Otherwise, you can drop your knees down, come to your Chaturanga halfway. Pandra, inhale, shoulders back. You can keep your knees down here or come into your regular upper facing. And shot, exhale, downward facing, and five breaths. So the key for your upper facing dog in any back bend pose is to really focus on opening from your upper back, not your lower. So that 
it's really important to keep your tail pointing back in your upper facing dog and keeping your lower belly just relax and not stretch in your any of your back bend four five inhale step forward head up exhale head down inhale rise up on the right palm stretch exhale hands by your side four more inhale hands up look up exhale hands down inhale head up exhale to your chaturanga once again knees down or chaturanga inhale upper facing dog really focusing on your chest movement not your lower belly exhale downward facing dog five breaths here one two three four five step forward inhale head up exhale head down inhale rise up on the white palm stretch exhale hands by your side three more egg on inhale egg do it exhale trini inhale chaturvati exhale another option to just come to your all fours position inhale you can also do the cow here and then exhale to your downward facing so cat cow is another alternative for those who have who cannot really go into your chaturanga with your big belly four five inhale come forward head up exhale head down inhale rise up all the way Samastijihi, exhale. Ekam inhale. Due, exhale. Trini inhale. Chattavadi, exhale. Pancha inhale. Sha, exhale. One. Two, three, four, five. Safta inhale. Ashto exhale. Naba inhale. Samasiddhi, exhale, let's do the last one. Ekam inhale. Dwe, exhale. Trini, inhale. Chattavari, exhale. Pancha, inhale. Shat, exhale. Five breaths. So you can keep the Ujjayi breaths by your bandhas, you have to let them go during pregnancy, especially Mala Bandha, Uriyana Bandha. So a uh, Kegel exercise is great, but Mala Bandha, too much of it could be, um, could intervene with your labor. So you might want to kind of loosen that up a little bit and the Uriyana Bandha is going to, you know, choke your baby's area. Yeah, so you want to keep that Uriyana Bandha completely let go during your pregnancy. Four. Five. Step forward. Inhale, head up. Exhale, head down. Inhale, rise up, palm stretch. Samastitihi, hands by your side. Surya Namaskar B. Bend your knees. Ekam, inhale. Dwe, exhale. Trini, inhale, Chattawari, exhale, Pancha, inhale, Sha, exhale, right foot forward, Sapta, inhale, Ashto, exhale, Nava, inhale, Dasha, exhale. Left side, 
Ekadesha, inhale. Dua desha, exhale. Tayor desha, inhale. Shato desha, exhale. One. Two. Three. Four and five. Hop forward. Pancha the shot. Inhale. Show the shot. Exhale. Bend your knees. Up to the shot. Inhale. Samasiti. He exhale. Now for this ukatasana position, for those who you have who have a little high blood pressure, you can keep your hands by your chest. Otherwise, inhale, exhale, hands down. Trini, inhale, chatwari, exhale. Pancha, inhale, sha, exhale. Sapta. Inhale, Ashto, exhale, Nava, inhale, Dasha, exhale, Left side, Ekadesha, inhale, Duadesha, exhale. Tayo desha, inhale, shato desha, exhale. One, two, three. And five, puncha the sha, inhale, shoulder sha, exhale, sapta the sha, inhale, samasiti he, exhale, last round, ekam, inhale, due, exhale. Trini, inhale, Chatuari, exhale, Pancha, inhale, Shat, exhale, Sapta, inhale, Ashto, exhale, Nava, Inhale, Dasha, exhale, Duadesha, come forward, exhale, Tayo Desha, inhale, Shato Desha, exhale, one. Two, three, four, and five. Puncha the sha, inhale, show the sha, exhale, sapta the sha, inhale. Samasitihi, exhale. Padangustasana. If you open the hips distance, do it. Exhale, hands down. Training, inhale, head forward. Chattawari, exhale, head down. So for this pose, 
you can open your feet a little wider than usual if your belly start to get um, to touch your thighs and you can start to feel that you can also don't have to fall down and you can just stay up right here also four and five inhale head forward exhale to parahastasana same thing you might actually catch your ankles instead of sliding your hands underneath your feet so do what you can do to accommodate your belly if it's okay still bring your hands underneath your feet head down four and five inhale your head up exhale hands to hips Inhale, come up. Exhale, samastitihi utita trikonasana. Right foot steps out to the side. With your exhale, hands down. You can also grab onto your right big toe or you can also grab onto your ankle. One. Two. Three. Four, five, inhale, come up all the way, exhale to the other side, one, two, three, four, Five. Inhale, rise up. Now, Paripita Trikonasana twisting is not recommended, so you can skip. Or for those who still have a little smaller belly, you can also bring your block down, left hand to the little bit towards the outer edge of your mat. So open your stance a little wider and you can reach up all the way. So you're still making a lot of space for your belly here. That really focus on your upper body to twist. Two. Three. Four. Five and hands down. Inhale, come up. Exhale the other side. Once again, the book suggests you to skip all of the twisting poses per Brita Trikonasana. So it's your choice. You might twist uh, or you might skip or you might actually take a really gentle approach. If you choose to twist like this, make sure your belly and your pelvis not twisting. Keeping that pelvis st stay stable, you're going to twist only from your shoulders and your chest. So shoulder blades coming together towards the center. Four, five, and hands down. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands down. Ujita Parshivakonasana. Right foot out to the side. Here you can also use a block underneath your right hand to come up a little higher on your hand. Or you can also do your right form down on your right thigh approach so that you have a little space for your belly. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, inhale, come up. Exhale, the other side. Left arm down, right arm alongside your ear. Drishti stays to your right fingertips. One. Two. Three. Inhale, rise up. Two, Parabhita Parshvakonasana. Once again, this twist is not recommended in the back. You can come down on your knee though to come into a really gentle twist. 
So you can keep your hips really nice and stable, not twisting at all. And gently really focus from your upper body to twist, hands to chest, and gentle twist. Or you can also come in, left hand down, right arm gently up. So you have a lot of space between your left hand and your right foot, and just gently reaching up. This is another option. Two, three, four, five, and slowly inhale, come up. Exhale, right knee down, hands to prayer, just gentle twist to the left or right hand down a lot of space between your right hand and your left foot and just open twist here one two three four five and gaze down inhale come up all the way exhale back to the center Okay, Parasarita Padottanasana, right leg at forward fold, inhale, right foot out to the side, and with your exhale, hands down. Now you don't have to go down deep into your fold, you can keep your hand down a little wider or further away. Inhale here, exhale, just gently let your head go, stay here. For those who can go deeper still, you can keep going. So one, Really listening to your body. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, head up, exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, rise up, exhale, here. Be inhale, arms wide. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, head up. Exhale, head down, elbows up, shoulder blades come together, one, two, three, four, five, keep your inner thighs nice and active to rise up, inhale, exhale here, see, inhale wide, Exhale, hands behind you. Inhale, shoulders back. And then exhale to fall full. So this C position, try not to force your arms to go down. Just remember that you have the hormones during the pregnancy to loosen your joints. So it's easy that your joints just go out of place. So make sure that you're engaging your thighs and your quads, making sure all your lower body is active and gently moving your arms away from your whole back with your breath, nothing forcing. Four and five, inhale, come up. Exhale, here, last one, inhale. Exhale, deep position. If you can reach your big toes, do that. Otherwise, you can just catch your ankles or your shin. Inhale, exhale, here. So take a gentler approach, basing, depending on your belly. One, two, three, Five, inhale, head up, exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, head up, exhale, samasthiti, back to the center. Okay. Bring your hands behind you for your Parshvatanasana. You can catch your fist behind you. This is another option along with your catching your elbows. Or you can do the reverse namaste as always. Now stepping your right foot back. Here, you can step this right foot a little wider to the side and left foot a little outer to the left side. So you are not on the one line, heel to heel, but rather a little bit two lines. So this way you have, you can still square your hips and come down, okay? Inhale here and then exhale, come down. Option to just stay here kind of halfway or if you can keep going, you can keep going. Two, three, four, 
five, inhale slowly, come up. Exhale the other side. So once again, you can open your stance a little bit wider. Exhale, keeping your legs nice and active to fall for one, two, three, four, five. Good. Inhale, slowly rise. Exhale, release, and samasthi back to the center. Utita hasta paragustasana, balancing position. So here, there's a lot of option here. Now, catching your right foot, as always, if this is going to still uh, work for you, do that. But otherwise, you can do this hand to your knee. Another thing that you can do is use a wall, and you can just put that foot on that wall and stay here. So all you're doing is kind of releasing um, too much of a strengthening in your Uriana Vanda area and just keeping this belly nice and relaxed. Okay, so do what you can do. Inhale here, exhale, no fall holding probably and just stay upright. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale here. Exhale, open up to the side. One. Same thing, hand to your knee or a foot on the wall works. Three. Four. Five. Inhale back to the center. Exhale here. Inhale, point your toe and one. Two, three, four, five. Once again, this balancing is too much. Foot on the wall. Left side also, you can put your left foot on the wall. Do the same thing. When you go to the side, you can still do this foot on the wall action here. Yeah. Or hand to knee. Or if you want to just repeat, hand to your foot, inhale. Exhale without fall folding, just stay up right here. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale here. Exhale, open up to the side. One, two, three. Four, five, inhale back to the center. Exhale here. You can put your foot on the wall or point your foot. One, two, three, four, five, and release. Good. Now, Adhavara Paramatanasana, you don't want to go in into your uh, fourfold with your heel here. So you have an option to just come into your tree position and stay. If you can still go into your lotus, you can catch with your left hand, bring your right hand behind your back and catch your elbow. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, and relax. And the other side, left foot into tree position or left knee to half lotus. Catch your right elbow with your left hand. One, two, three, four, and five and release. Okay, Ukatasana here. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, head up. Exhale to your Chaturanga. Inhale, upper facing. Exhale, downward facing. Step forward to your Ukatasana. 
you can keep your feet together or you can open your feet as well if you feel like that makes you be more stable if you have a high blood pressure you have your hands to your chest otherwise same posture hands above your head one two three five and hands down inhale here exhale to your chaturanga inhale upper facing exhale downward facing right foot forward we have a dress on a same thing with your arm position hands to your chest or hands up one two three four five other side one two three Five and warrior two. One, two, three, four, and five. The other side. One, two, three, four, and five. Hands down to your chaturanga. Inhale, upper facing. Exhale, downward facing now jump through you have to replace with walking through to your dandasana one two so once again you don't want to do uriana banda mula banda but just gentle chin down jarandara banda should be fine four Five inhale here to your Paschimottanasana. You can have a lot of option here. You can just hands on your shin and stay here, chin. or you can catch your feet, open your feet a little bit wider, and just gently come down here. One, two, three. Four, five inhale here and an exhale B same thing you can catch your shin catch your ankles stay upright or you can keep going with your hands on your feet you can open your feet a little bit one two three four five inhale here exhale hands down Okay, so once again, you don't want to do the vinyasa, so you're going to cross your legs, come on your shins, hands down to your chaturanga instead of taking your lift up. Inhale, upper facing. Exhale, downward facing. Okay, and slowly come into a seated position once again to your parvatanasana hands behind your feet so you have an option to come to your tabletop you can bend your knees and gently lift up and slowly let your hand back one now for those who can just still keep going with your regular one if your belly is not too heavy you can come into your regular parvatanasana two three four 
five and gently lift drop your hips down once again no vinyasa just stepping back exhale inhale upper facing exhale downward facing coming to a seated Adha Baddha Padma Pashmantanasana right foot into tree position or you can come into your lotus if you do that catch your right foot with your left hand right hand around your back catch your elbow then stay up right here two three five inhale here and then exhale you can take the vinyasa or skip and just change the side so it's really optional here if you're taking the left side right hand catch your left foot and left hand to your right elbow one two three four five and inhale relax inhale hands forward exhale to your chaturanga inhale upper facing exhale to your downward facing walk to a seated for triangle mukai kapara pashmatanasana so for this position if you have been practicing this pose comfortably not much of a modification here but you can open your right foot right thigh and your left thigh a little wider if you like to have a space for your belly otherwise you can just stay upright or your hand on your shin or you can come down so it's really depending on how you feel with your belly one two three four five inhale head up exhale hands down you can take the vinyasa optional or change the side left and back and right leg straight and with your exhale stay upright or hands on your ankle shin or your foot one two three four five inhale head up exhale hands down inhale here to prepare exhale for your chaturanga inhale upper facing exhale downward facing walk or come through to a seated janushasana a so janushasana a b c all are really good for your pregnancy because it's really all hip opening and nice opening here you don't want to twist your toes too much but really focus on your chest alignment rather than your whole belly and with your exhale you can fall forward or just once again you can catch your ankle and stay upright one two three four five inhale head up exhale hands down vinyasa or change the side inhale prepare for the left side left knee back exhale hands on your shin ankle or your foot one two three four five inhale head up exhale hands down inhale here exhale chaturanga inhale upper facing exhale downward facing come through jana shushasana b jana shushasana a can be repeated for this one if you're comfortable to go into your b you can sit 
on your right heel mula banda comes on top of your right heel so this is okay uh, during pregnancy but if this gets like any com uncomfortable then don't do that and also third trimester just avoid this pose and repeat a one two three five inhale here exhale vinyasa you can take that or change the side so a lot of time when I teach beginners I also let them to kind of skip the vinyasa in between right and left side to sustain the energy uh, so same modification here um, during pregnancy we tend to lose some energy maybe some people don't but a lot of people lose some energy, get really tired all the time. So you don't have to push it through, you know, to increase the risk of injury. You can sustain in your energy by skipping your uh, vinyasa in between. Four, five, inhale here, exhale, hands down. Inhale here, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upper facing, exhale, downward facing coming through so here you can option to come to B A or B or you can also tuck your right toes under lift your right heel up and scoot your hips forward now if you keep going your heel might touch your belly so if that's not comfortable scooch back once again so your right heel is somewhat just kind of a little bit away from your groin of your left thigh you're still working on your open hip here and then you can also avoid the fall folding if your heel is going to stick into your belly so choose your option one two three really focus on your hip opening from your energetic connection here four and five inhale head up exhale hands down you can take the vinyasa or choose not to and you can once again drop your left toes down right here dig in instead of coming so close to the groin you can just stay with a little bit away from your belly to have a little space for your belly opening your left thigh focusing on that and left heel dig into your right thigh one two three four five and inhale here and then exhale release inhale exhale chaturanga inhale upper facing exhale to your downward facing and you're gonna come to a seated to your marriage chest on a so you're gonna lift your right kneecap up so you're gonna sit down right here up. now march chest on a you can just stay upright with your right hand wrapping around stay here you can also step your right foot a little bit wider out to the side than usual for your belly. You can also come with your shin, hands to shin, and draw your right knee towards your shoulder. So this is a good modification for those who cannot bind also. Yeah. Now, for those who are still comfortable, you can also do the bind as always. But really focus on the hips so just and your belly have a lot of space one two three four five inhale head up exhale let's take the other side left foot goes a little bit wider to the side wrap your left hand around stay here or do the same thing hands on your shin stay left knee draw into your shoulder or catch your hands behind you one two three four five inhale head up exhale hands down vinyasa inhale 
exhale, inhale, exhale. Come to a seated position. Now, march asana B is not recommended, but what you can do is put the left foot down on the ground, right heel in front of it, and then you can just wrap your right hand from the outside and stay here, or you can just come a little bit deeper into your bind, but not in the lotus so that your left heel is not going to bother your belly. So this is the same modification for those with your knee issue that cannot take a lotus pose. Two, three, four, five, and then slowly inhale, head up. Exhale, release. Now another option to skip the vinyasa in a regular leg class, you can do the inhale, exhale, and just take the count with the class, and coming into the other side. Right heel comes down, left heel in front of it, and then you can once again just be careful here for your belly, and then you can stay here wrapping your left hand from the outside or do, do the same bind. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale here, exhale. Inhale to your take your vinyasa. Exhale to your chaturanga. Inhale upward facing. Exhale downward facing. And then you're gonna take your C and D. Now C and D in the book is recommended to completely skip them because they are twist. For me, I can still come into the Y legged position and just right hand back and gently just just have a tiny twist so once again i'm really focusing on upper body opening so your chest opening and keeping your belly stable so this is an option but once again you can also completely skip c and d and you can also take the other side so you have a lot of space here between your left hand and your right thigh and gentle twist. Focusing on your upper body movement, not your lower belly. Two, three, four, five and slowly back to the center. So taking a vinyasa, let's skip the D as this is going to be um, not recommend that during the pregnancy. Navasana is also not recommended during your pregnancy per book because you don't want to stress too much in your core strengths here. What you can do though, if you want to still work on something, inner thigh strength. So what you can do is sometimes you can have a blanket or something in between your thighs, just kind of like a squeeze your thighs together. And you can also stay here. This is a really gentle, but also like working on your inner thighs and psoas muscles. So uh, it's a good alternative. Just kind of squeeze this in. And also you can also completely skip your Navasana as the book recommends. Okay. Bhujapidasana is also recommended to skip completely. And so as the uh, um, next couple pose, Garbha Pindasana and Kukutasana also are recommended to be skipped. Okay, so that takes us to Barakonasana. So Barakonasana is a great pose actually, recommended for the pregnant women to take to really open up the hips. So pull that heels, open the soles of your feet if you can inhale, and then exhale, hands come down on your feet, and four fold. One, so you don't have to go all the way down once again. You can probably tell where to stop two, three, four, 
and five. Inhale here for B position. Just be gentle and just curl in just gently. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, you can take the vinyasa or also skip. Inhale here. Exhale to your chaturanga. Inhale, upper facing. Exhale, downward facing. Coming through to seated for Upabhishta Konasana. Feel open to the side. And you can catch your shins. If you can keep reaching out to your outer, outer side of your feet, do that. But a lot of times your belly is going to start to get too big. So you can kind of come down with your shins or your ankle. Two. Three. Four, five, good. Now from here, you can lift just one foot only if this is too much to both of your, how your both of your feet open. So you can do this, or you can come to regular one, two, three, four, five. And take your vinyasa, inhale here, exhale, chaturanga, inhale, upper facing, exhale, downward facing, walking, come through. The next pose, supta um, konasana, is not recommended, especially to roll on the back. If you still feel okay to do that, you can just come. You don't have to go all the way up, hips over your shoulder, but just catch your feet over your body and like this. One, two, three, four, five, and you can come to a seated position and gently come down. Okay. Take the vinyasa or also you have an option to just take the breast here. Now, Supta Padagastasana is great if you still feel good. An authority trimester, master, if doctor recommends you to not to lie on your back anymore, or if you start to feel nauseous on your back with the weight of your belly, and skip the pose. If you feel still okay, I'm uh, 20 week and I'm still feeling okay to lie down on my back, so I'm gonna come down and left hand on your hip, you can catch your shin, catch your ankle, catch the inside of your knee, or catch your foot. Exhale, you can lift a little bit, but not squeeze your belly. One, you can also keep your head down. Two, three, four, five, good, inhale, head back down. And then exhale, you're gonna plug this right thigh in. And exhale, slowly open it up to the side. One, this is actually beneficial for labor. You can actually practice it. Two, three, four, five, back to the center, we join, inhale, exhale, here. Inhale, head back down. Exhale, put your foot back down. Left, inhale, catch your left big toe. Exhale to left. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, head back down. Exhale, open up to the side. One, two, three. Four, five, and back to the center. We shall inhale, exhale here. Inhale, head back down. Exhale, release. Chakrasana Vinyasa is not recommended, so let's not take it and just come to a seated position. You can take your regular Vinyasa. And when you come to seated, 
this is pretty much all we can do for your uh, primary series as the Ubaya Paragustasana, Mika Eka Pada, um, the next one, Mika Eka Pashmantanasana, and then also Septu Bandasana. All of these three poses, rolling on the back and uh, staying on the back, is not recommended. So, if you feel this still, you can do it, but you can't. Let's just skip this. All right, so we're gonna start to close. Closing for your Avada Nirasana. If you want to keep practicing Avada Nirasana, the caution is that you don't wanna stretch your uterus area, right? So you are going to keep your pelvis nice and stable, really focus on your upper back. You can also just take your bridge pose as well. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I will show you the Arvada Nirasana option. Inhale. Two, so really focus on not stretching your belly, but opening your upper back. One, two, three, four, five, and down, inhale, exhale, last round. One, legs are active, two, three, Four, five. No chakrasana vinyasa here. And slowly come to a seated position. And to your Pashmantanasana, you can open your legs a little wider for your spades. And come down to your shins or your ankle or outside of your feet, whatever that feels good for you. One, you can also keep staying up with your back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Slowly inhale here. And next, so you can take optional vinyasa. Salamba Shavangasana, shoulder stance. I recommend you to start putting that blanket or bolster or pillow by the wall. And you're gonna put uh, legs on the wall. Okay, so this is a really nice option if you have it. Okay, and you can gently come right here, lie down. Put your hip forward, two, put your hips on your blanket and come down. So this option is really nice because um, Salamba Shavangasana definitely start to get very uncomfortable when the belly start to get bigger. And then for me it's already uncomfortable because your belly and your boobs and everything is coming towards your face. <laughs> So it's okay to just kind of come on your legs on the wall, relax here. You can take about 10 breaths here. Take as much as you need. You can pause the video and I stay on, or you can roll to the side to come up. Okay. Now, um, Machyasana fish pose. You can take it or skip. Um, the book is recommended to skip, but it feels also great because your back is a little bit tight, and then you can. Just take that with your regular lotus or cross-legged position. Still kind of opening your chest here, so keeping your belly nice and 
stable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you feel short of breath, definitely come out of this. And Uttana Padasana, you can take it, but because it takes a lot of effort into your Uriyana Bandha, your lot belly area, so you don't have to take it. Skip this pose and just come to a seated position for your headstand. Now, headstand is uh, good for you only if you are not in third trimester preparing for your labor or um, if you have um, solid pre-confident practice of your headstand. If you're unstable, if you have a risk of falling, skip completely. Just come to um, dolphin pose or just come into your child pose and just go to the closing. No risk of falling during pregnancy. Okay, but take that when you're not pregnant. Okay, so only if you're comfortable. And you can also take the B position. Lifting with your heel. And child pose once again, just like Shavanga Shavangasana, I'm not taking the whole breast count here. You are welcome to take as long as you like, as much as you are not dizzy. So be very mindful. Okay? So last three poses. It's pretty much the same. You just don't want to um, do the Bada Padamasana in a crazy uh, strong way so that you are not going to hurt your belly. So you can come into your um, gentler little loosened lotus position, catch your elbows and you can stay here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Padamasana, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Skip your Uti Putihi and then you're gonna lie down for your Shabasana. Shabasana for those who are still okay for you to sleep on the back, this is okay for you to probably lie down on your back for Shabasana. If your doctor told you to stay on your side, or if you feel nauseous staying on the back, then you're gonna come on the side for your Shabasana. You can use a blanket or pillow and get comfortable. <sighs> Relax, show Ujjayi breath completely, release it out. And you can stay here as long as you need. Take extended amount of your rest. <sighs> 